Welcome to our high intensity interval training today. It is going to be a doozy and we will talk all about it. But first, let's warm up our body. So we're gonna start with digs. So we're gonna start with our feet straight forward. We're gonna send our right heel forward. Hips gonna go back. Feel that big stretch in the back of the right leg. Sweep it up. So hinging back, good morning style, deadlift style. Squeezing up just right away. Bringing a little stretch into our hamstring and also a little activation through our butt as we squeeze and as we sweep the arms, feeling open across the chest. One more on this side. Ah, let's switch it out. Send the hips back. Squeeze it on up. So today is going to be one of my favorite days to date. As always, take what works, leave what doesn't. We're going to be using dumbbells, so if you haven't grabbed those yet, go ahead and Grab a pair or three so that we can get set all together. Beautiful. Coming back up, feet underneath those hips. Let's just take some squats. And back and down, standing up. Feet are straight forward, feeling those quads turn on, knees in line with that second and third toe. Let's take a little cross body jab. So we're gonna squat, punch it across, triple extension through he oh, heel, hip, knee, and ankle. Inhale lower, big squeeze across. Starting that breathing. Breathing is gonna be super important today. I mean, it's always important, but especially if we start to overheat a little bit, that's gonna be what brings us back to cooling through that internal body temperature. Good, four. Squat jumps in three, in two, and find that squat jump and pause. Landing low in that squat, as always, you don't have to jump, you can calf raise it and back down. Woo! Here's four, training those mechanics. Three, toes in, heels out. Two, and one. Oh, hello, quads. It's so nice to have you sitting back and down, little side lunges, continuing to warm up through inside, outside of those legs. Inhale, lower. Exhale, up. Good. As always with our side lunges, thinking butt going way back. Knee stacking between the hip and the ankle, good. One more on each side. And then let's take some windmill. So keeping the legs pretty straight, we'll take opposite hand across. <sighs> Inhale, lower. Exhale, up. Big squeeze through the butt. So come all the way to standing here. Good. Three, a two, and a one. Top of your mat, let's go reverse lunge into a balance. Long to that supporting leg, set it down. As you step into your balance, really think of supporting leg getting super strong, booty is tight, core is active. Energy through the top of your head. You can always set the foot down and then pick it up. Or if you wanna work on that stability, you can come right up to standing, good. Ha, one more here. And beautiful, top of the mat, chin down. Let's roll it into a nice high plank. Shoulders over elbows, over wrists. Squeezing the butt, gripping through the hands so we're not coming down flat on the palm. Really leaving a little bit of space underneath that palm. Active through the fingers, squeeze the butt. Take the feet a little wider, shoulder taps. Beautiful team. Keep breathing here for four, three, Two, step left foot up, big stretch. You can drop that back knee if you need. Tap the floor, drop the hand and switch. Big stretch up, tap the floor and switch. So we're taking whatever foot is forward, that's gonna be the hand that reaches up and then taps the ground. Squeezing through the glute, always an option to drop the knee. Here we go, one more each side, opening up through that thoracic spine. Getting nice and deep in those hips. And back to your plank, let's go mountain climbers, run it out. Knees up towards the chin, shoulders over those wrists, five, four. Here's three, two, little down dog. Shift it forward, drop the knees, push-ups. Inhale, lower, exhale up, five, four. Hands rotating away from the body, three, two, one. Flip it on your back, let's finish with some blue bridges. So good, team. Make sure you can touch the heels. Inhale up, exhale. 
As we hit these bridges, really feel the glutes engaged. So heels pulling back energetically towards the butt. Good. Imagine a little beach ball between the legs. Squeeze those thighs for four. For three. Here's two. And one. Flip it on over. Make your way up to standing. Let's just take some high knees. A little bit of a cardio turn up. If we're not jumping today, that AOT, we can march it. Here we go, team. For five. For four. Keep it. For three. For two. Shake it out. Okay. Hi. Let's talk about what is happening today. We have four circuits. They are going to have three parts to them. The first part is going to be a one minute cardio breakdown. So for one minute, we're doing one cardio move. No problem. After that, we go directly into an eight minute AMRAP. So that means for eight minutes, we're running through four exercises as many times as we can in eight minutes. After the eight minute AMRAP, we go directly into one minute of core. So that is 10 whole minutes of working. Here's what I'll say right away. You know the deals. If you need to pull back, take a break, pull back, take a break, hop back in when you can. This is a chunk that'll keep moving. The cool thing about AMRAPs is that you are moving at your own pace. You'll get a certain number of reps, so you'll move through them however you can safely. If you're like, I just don't feel like counting, go ahead and just follow me and I'll be loosely following the AMRAP too. So if you're like, I don't remember where I am, just jump on wherever I am and we'll get through it together. And again, please let me emphasize, take the time you need. Breathe, pause, these do get very intense. So again, we're gonna be using our dumbbells today and other than that, that's the only equipment we need. Our first circuit, we have one minute, remember that's gonna be our first cardio push, one minute of skaters. So skaters are single leg power moves we're loading into our squat, explode, and land. If we are not jumping today, not a problem. We can step to curtsy lunge, step to curtsy lunge, making sure that we're nailing that curtsy exactly. And as we do, you're still gonna get the heart rate pretty high because you're working through those big muscles. So after one minute of skaters, we're going into our first AMRAP. That is going to look like 10 floor to ceilings with our dumbbells, so two dumbbells, Feet a little bit wider than hip with this in slight turnout at the toes, almost like a sumo squat. We're gonna send the hips back. We're gonna squeeze the butt forward, swing the weight to our shoulders, and then overhead. So weight squeeze forward and overhead. If you need to slow this down, you can deadlift, curl to press. Deadlift, curl to press. Otherwise, there is a little bit of a snatch variation going on, but we're super tight through the belly and butt, so we're never in the low back. So 10 floor to ceilings into, this will look familiar, six per side, weights come to our shoulders, reverse lunge, overhead balance press. So just like our warm up, that reverse lunge into a balanced overhead press. We have six on each side. Then we're gonna drop that weight, split the hands, side lunge, remember that into our high pull. So opposite hand will have the bell as we sit back and down. Big pull up through center, six on each side. Into setting our weight somewhere we won't trip on them. Did it this, 16 skaters. So we repeat that power move. We're gonna run those four exercises, 10 floor to ceilings, six per side, reverse lunge press, six per side, side lunge high pull, 16 skaters as many times as we can in eight Minutes. Again, if you're like, what well, is happening? Just follow me. And then our final minute together, we're going to come onto our back and we're going to bang out 60 seconds of super controlled bicycles. Oh, I told you this was going to be a fun one. All right, my friends, set those wearables because I have a feeling our heart rates are going to skyrocket. We are starting on our feet. Move your dumbbells somewhere you won't trip on them. One minute of skaters. All right, team. You are amazing, Raiders. We are going in three, two, and hitting these skaters. Take a second to really make sure we've got this landing. The most important part of a skater is the landing, just like when we squat jump, making sure we're bent to the knee, and the launch. 
So this is a single leg squat variation, which means we need to bend through that leg. If you're just sort of launching off a stiff leg, we're missing the whole point. Where's the fun in that? Remember, we can always step to curtsy. So step, tuck it behind, tuck it behind. Get low and loaded, foot straight forward. Once you're good, feel free to play around with distance, with height, maybe just consistency. 20 seconds from right now, we are grabbing that weight. And we are going into our first AMRAP. So good, team. Notice if as you do these, your chest is dropping. Just like a squat, then chest up, eyes up. Six seconds. Oh yeah, already. That heart rate's starting to jack up. Three, two, grab your weights. 10, floor to ceiling. So tap the ground, squeeze the butt, up and over. Hips go back, squeeze the glutes, up and over. Modification, hinge, curl, to press. We never, ever, ever feel this in our low back. If you blow through 10 of these, your next move is going to be six reverse lunges into overhead balance press. So good team, once you have these ground to overheads, really squeeze the butt, keep the core tight. You can turn it way into a power move. After you hit 10, rack the weights. Left foot forward, reverse lunge, step it up. Overhead balance. Stay on one leg for six reps. If you are having a ton of trouble balancing at the top, drop that toe, but keep the majority of the weight in that front leg. Good team. Once you hit six on one side, you are six on the other. Remembering to press down through that front heel like crazy. Hips are straight forward. We never want to feel this in the knee. We can always slow it down. We can always hit the balance, drop the foot and press. Once you hit six on each side, you are into six side lunges to high pulls. Remember, we are moving at our own pace. So dropping that weight. Six side lunge into that high pull. Sitting back and down. Making sure that as we pull, shoulder goes down the back as the elbow goes high. Six on each side. If you're way ahead of me, your next move is gonna be back to those 16 skaters. One rep per skater. So good, team. We are already two minutes into this first push. You are amazing. Really make sure we're sitting back into our side lunges. And once you hit six, get those legs out of the way. Into our skaters. Any variation on the feet, we're going for 16. Strong landing, strong launch. Get bent in that leg. Get bent. You know what I mean. Remember, that's super important to protect the knee but also for the efficiency of this exercise. Get that booty low. Step tap, if you're out of these skaters, you're back to that ground the ceiling. So good. Five minutes to go, feet out. Hinge, squeeze the shoulders, overhead. Whenever we do a power move that's activating from our glutes, that is really, what we want to focus on. The drive through the hips. And then just like any overhead press, rib cage pulling in tight. Remembering we never want our heart to go below our hips. So never let that chest drop too far. Keep it in the booty. When you're at, you're in the six reverse lunges into an overhead press. Beautiful, one side. Slow it down just a little. Staying in control. If you are feeling wobbly here, take a beat, set it up, maybe keep that foot down on the floor so that you can balance with the toe, but really work on staying straight and sturdy through that front leg. After you hit six reverse lunges to overhead, you're back into your six side lunges. Halfway through team, taking that break wherever you need. If you're starting to feel lightheaded, it's generally an indication that maybe just maybe we're holding our breath. Slow it down. Stay tuned into your body. It's one of the hardest parts of AMRAPs. 
is that we sort of dissociate and just move through it. But really make sure, hey, that your form is perfect, always. So if you're like, I don't know what my form is doing, slow it down. This is high intensity, but high intensity at our own pace. And that means that we're in control of everything we're doing. So if you're feeling out of control, slow it down, get back in the driver's seat, put these exercises where they belong, out of the knees, low back and shoulders. So good. There is no right speed for this other than the one that we are in control of. There's technically no right version. So if you're modifying, I love that because it means that you're able to meet yourself where you're at and rise to the level of this challenge, which, make no mistake, this is a pretty intense challenge. Team, under three minutes to go. Stay strong. If you're done with your skaters, you are back. Overheads, or excuse me, floor the ceilings. And again, if you're like, counting is harder than all of this, I agree. Just copy what I'm doing. The water's fine. Don't count what I'm doing, because I'm pretty sure my reps are a little off. It's hard for me to count even without talking, so add that in, you know. Check in with these ground overheads. Are you using the glutes? If you're feeling it in your low back, slow it down. Squeeze, curl, to press. Maybe even drop weight if you need. Keep squeezing the butt like crazy. Keep that rib cage knit in tight. And then keep that rib cage tight as you hit your lunge to overhead. So the goal whenever we go overhead is to make sure that our core is so engaged that we never offload into our low back. So that's another good indication. If you're feeling wobbly or like you're feeling it in your low back, slow it way down. One minute and 30 seconds. Here we go, team. Can you breathe? I, like I said, if you're starting to overheat, go ahead and open mouth exhale. It's gonna release a little bit of that heat for you. Are you in control? Are these next 75 seconds something that you're gonna remember? We don't wanna black this out. I mean, it might make it a little bit easier to get through in the very moment, but we might regret the choices we make. Just like drinking, right? We don't wanna black this out. Woo! So good, team. Check it out in those side lunges. Is your chest up? Are your eyes up? Or are you dropping and letting the heart go lower than the hips? This should activate through those quads. Less than one minute, and you are out of your first AMRAP and into your one minute of bicycles. And then you're done with your first round. Oh my gosh. You guys, what a doozy. So strong, 30 seconds. Wherever you are, commit. If you're doing a one-sided exercise right now, maybe go ahead and switch, just to ensure that you can stay nice and balanced. Here we go, team. 15 seconds. Wherever you are, finish strong and in control. We are on our backs. In 10. Oh yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Eight seconds. Keep breathing, we've got bites. In three, two, Come on down, final one minute. Inhale one direction, exhale the other. We've been going hard and fast. Now slow it down. Finding that twist, using the heat that we created in that AMRAP to sculpt that core. Yes, you can. This is the cauldron effect, that fire that creates, use it. If this is too much, you can always drop the feet and work from here, twisting. If you're pulling on your neck, leave the arms beside you. No neck pull, please. I'm with you. This is a doozy. We are almost out of it. Staying strong. Here we go, team. 15 seconds, yes. Yes, you can. Almost out of it. In 10 seconds, we get a big juicy break. Maybe you're just holding a little bit of a crunch here, but we're working for four. Three, two, and shake it out. Hi. Oh my God, you're amazing, Raiders. Take a sip of water. If you can, try to come on up to standing so that
that we're not letting that heart rate drop. And let's just jump right in to our next round of fun. So we are getting started with wide pull butt kicks. So wide pull means that we're starting with fingers in front of our body, drawing them straight back, turning on through those shoulder blades. Butt kicks. Technically, they can be this butt kick run, and we're going to pull, so it's kind of like a jumping jack, but we're working slightly less, or less in this range and more in the sagittal. The other way we can do it is stepping wide pulls. Notice how my core is turning on, and I'm not all floating through my spine. I'm saying super turn on there. So one minute of those wide pull butt kicks. Then we've got that AMRAP. Ooh, I'm, my match is out all over the place. Okay, our AMRAP is going to be... Six push-ups to renegade rows. Of course, you know I love them. Push-ups to renegade rows. As always, so many options. Both hands can be on the dumbbell. Both hands can be on the floor with the dumbbell in between. Your knees can be up. They can be down. But we set up in our nice high plank. Maybe with the knees down. Push up. Take the feet wide. We row to the pocket. Row to the pocket. One rep. We have six of those. Then, six per side. Turkish sit-up. Weight is optional, so if you're using a weight, you're going to hold the dumbbell. If not, you're not. We're going to set up whatever leg is bent, that arm is going to match. You're going to roll down, inhale, exhale up, reaching that arm to the sky the whole time. Six on one side, six on the other. Again, if you want a little extra, toss that dumbbell in. Then we're going into back. We're going into 10 alternating, hinging at the hips, wide row to back fly. Staying in control here, never offloading into that low spine. And then we have the cardio again. So 20 butt kicks with that wide pull. So two, three, four. I'm gonna be walking this one, but if you wanna jump it, get nuts. And then finally, our core at the end is going to be a super person hold. Coming down, big stretch here, and just chilling for 60 seconds. I mean, I'm thrilled. Butt kick, wide pulls, come on up. We're going in three, two, and butt kick, wide pulls. Again, this can be a jumping butt kick today. I'm just gonna wide pull step it. I'm getting enough activation. And that's the great thing about these classes, is we can always cater them to what we need today. So if we need a little more, we can jump it. If we need a little less, we can step it. If we need even less, we can slow it down and alternate between wide pull and butt kick. 30 seconds. Notice, if we're letting go of that core, right? So we're really just pulling on to that tight pair of pants. Shoulders are down our back. We're squeezing, squeezing. The top of the shoulders should be on the fire. 15 seconds, and then we get to push up renegade row. I know, I am also very excited. Five seconds. Here we go, team four. Renegade row in three, two, grab those weights. You have six of these. Weights can be under both hands, or you can go ahead and have one weight in the center of your mat. Some people prefer that for their wrists. As always, we want to think about the hips staying super still. So knees can stay down the entire time. As you row, if you're rowing with your left hand, squeeze in your left glute. Rowing with your right, squeeze that right glute. So that we're fighting the rotation of the trunk. Once you hit six of these, you are in two. Six per side, Turkish sit-ups. So again, dumbbell optional here. Whatever leg is bent, that arm is up, rolling down. Inhale, exhale, stretch. Notice how I continue to reach through the ceiling here with my arm. So what I mean by that is, a lot of times when people come down, they sort of reach back and swing up. Minimize that reach back. Imagine holding on to something hanging on the ceiling. Keeping your arm extended the whole time. Bicep rotating around the ears, switch sides. If you, once you hit six. If you are already on the other side of this, my friends, you are in two, 10 reps. 
Alternating between that wide row and your back fly. So good. Are we breathing? Early on, we want to make sure that we really set up through that breath. Beautiful team. Remember, we've got that wide row to back fly. So a ton of upper back here. Keeping those hips back, feeling the energetic stretch between our glutes and our hamstrings. Big squeeze, try not to fling these. A lot of times with back flies, they go all over the place. Once you're done with 10 reps, five of each, you're back into those butt kicks. 20 butt kick to wide pulls. If you're stepping, go for like 14 instead. If you're jumping, go for that full 20. And if you've already blown past these wide pulls, you, my friend, get to go back to those renegade row push-ups. So once you've hit 14 to 20, nailing this cardio pull, come on down. Setting up in that nice strong plank position, rather staying on the toes or allowing yourself to drop to the knees. Remember, what can we do to minimize any rock in that torso as we row? Maybe it's continuing to think of the glutes squeezing down. Maybe it's dropping on the knees and really focusing on belly button drawing into spine, nailing the shape of that row. This is one of the reasons we want to keep that anti-rotation so we can keep this work in that back line. Beautiful. Maybe we have a weight, maybe not. Into your Turkish sit-ups. Inhale lower and exhale up. So good. If you want, you can keep your opposite hand on the floor. Use it for a little bit of assistance. But whatever we are doing, shoulders are down the back, arms are reaching up to the sky, and as we roll down, we're finding that C curve in our spine that allows us to keep in that core as opposed to a flat back, which sort of works the core, but then as soon as it gets that sweet spot, that low belly, we sort of bottom out. So if you notice, as you roll down, that you just sort of collapse that last couple of inches, chances are you need to add that C curve. One, two, have six, and six. Wide row into that back fly. Dude, you are officially halfway through. You got this. Keep breathing. Oh yeah, hi. Hey there, Go oh there. Good, another thing to think about with these rows is the spine staying nice and engaged. So what I mean by that is, as we open, we don't sort of kick our torso up. Our spine is staying super engaged, and it's as if we have a two by four strapped to our back, keeping it perfectly parallel. So good, 10 of these, into that cardio push. So strong, team. Maybe we try the butt kick, jump, if we're feeling crunchy, maybe not. And like I said, I love it all. For me personally, I really like nailing the activation of this wide row. It is crazy how much strength we can target body weight working those upper shoulder blades. So good team. You know the deal, once you're done with these, push up renegade rows, less than three minutes left. How do we make each round a little stronger than the last? With our push-ups, are you getting that chest between the hands or if the hand, dumbbell is in the center, are you tapping that dumbbell? A lot of times with push-ups, I see these little sort of bends in the elbow, but we don't actually hit the chest. So really think of taking the chest between the thumbs, tap the floor, shoulders back, hands rotate apart energetically. Heck yeah, team. If you are into those Turkish sit-ups, Maybe try adding the weight this round. Just play around with what it feels like. Remember, we can always choose a heavier option. And then if it starts to get too heavy, we drop it. That's how we can work towards progressive overload. So we are never, as I always like to say, we are never married to the option we start with. In fact, one of the best ways in working at home to get stronger is origin is to choose a slightly heavier or more difficult option to work on it until it becomes a little too hard for us and then move back to that second option. So you're literally pushing your body to adapt to a heavier weight or 
a slower sit up, right? There's another adaptation that would be hard. Slow down that C curve, really force all the way to the end. That low belly to turn on and say, oh, what is happening? There's another one, sing while you do this. You wanna make the workout hard? Belt it out, baby. So good, I definitely went on a 5K yesterday and I definitely sang the entire time. And yeah, it was very hard, y'all. Here we go, one minute on the clock. And then we are into those super people. My favorite thing about singing while you work out, especially if you're outside, is people think you're crazy. And that's so unusual for me. <laughs> Keep it up. Remember, we're having a good time and we are in control of everything we do. 45 more seconds. If you have taken a break, can you get back in just right here, right now? Finishing up these final 30 seconds together. If you are woo, doing a sit up that favors one side, go ahead and switch right now so that you can make sure to get an even count on both. Team, 20 seconds from here. We are lying down on our belly. We are exploring a super person hold. And we're having a great time as we finish up our second circuit of the day. Woo! Five seconds. Yes, you can. Weight to side in three, two, on your belly. Big stretch. Chin to chest. Hands and fingers reaching apart energetically like you're stretching in opposite directions. Finding that reverse smile. If your shoulders are lit, Send the arms down the side, palms down, soaring cobra. Shoulders pulling back and together, chin tucks, and breathe. I'm choosing this option, but again, five and five years is a great choice for you if you're feeling it. So good team, can we press our glutes a little tighter? If this is too much, we can drop the toes, or inhale lower, exhale up, but use the butt here. Lift from the back of the heart to the back of the head. Keep breathing. If your chin's up, tuck it. You got this. Ah, 10 seconds. Can we commit just a little longer? Keep breathing. Inner thighs wrapping up. Squeeze the legs. Here's five, four, three, two. Drop the hands, child pose. Little stretch here. Oh, my stars. Whose idea was this? Hey, here's another great opportunity to Sip a little water. Say a little prayer. Let's talk about three. You are officially halfway through. And shucks, I'm so proud of you. So we're gonna celebrate. We are gonna celebrate where you are right now with one minute of burpees. Wow, 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 wow. I had to, it's week nine. Burpees, if you don't know, look a little something like this. We launch it, landing through a squat, dropping our hands, shoot it back, push up, jump through a squat, and up. Not jumping, that's okay. Drop through a squat, step it back, drop the knees, chest to deck, through that squat, and up. Ha <laughs> ha. So we've got a minute of those, no biggie. After that, we're finding a nice high plank. This will look a lot like our warm up because we did it. Shoulder tap, so feet wider than your mat. Squeeze the butt. Just like on our renegade rows, we're focusing on not opening through the hips, so really squeeze the glute down. Always an option to take it from the knees. 30 of those, so it is meant to cook a little bit. If you're going slow and wanna really nail the foundation, I also really support that. So you can either do 30 taps, or you can do, let's say 14 with a little bit slower cadence so that you're really nailing the foundation. And again, I love both these options. Then we're going into side V-ups on your back, or side rather. We're up and down. We have 10 side V-ups. Modification, come on up to sort of like um, an assisted side plank. Lift from here. Further modification, top leg. 10 on one side, flip it and reverse it. 10 on the other. Into 10 squat press outs. So, Grabbing a dumbbell, wow, it's our first dumbbell level round. Holding it by the balls, feet straight forward. As we sit into our squat, we press the weight forward as a counterbalance. 
shoulders down or back. So 30 or 14 shoulder taps, depending on speed, 10 side V-ups per side, 10 squat presses, and then eight burpees. And then our core is a dolphin push-up. So we're setting up, let's go forearm plank with a triangle base. I know, nice strong forearm plank, pipe to shift, pipe to shift. Getting a nice activation through tricep, also a little bit of shoulder mobility, core is tight. If that's just not happening today, take some version of a forearm plank. We'll talk about it when we get there. Wow, I keep talking, but honestly, we have burpees next, and I'm just so excited for us. So burpees, one minute on the clock, in four, three, you guys are amazing, two, and remember we jump it up, land through that squat, pop it back, hop through the squat, non-jump variation, squat, plant the hands, step back, drop the knees, push up, walk it up, squat, use that breath, Whatever version you're taking, I'm in full support of, but the most important part to me is that your feet, as you transition from floor to standing, are in that squat shape. That's A, where all the power comes from, but B, where everything can go wrong. So our feet are all over the place. That puts our knees in precarious positions, our hips in precarious positions. Keep popping, team. 20 seconds. You can take the push-up out of your coach from last round. Stay with it. 10 seconds. And we are into those shoulder taps. For eight. Wee! Stay for five. Four. Three. Two. High plank. Take those feet wide. We're either going one. Two. Three. Four. Or one. Two. Totally up to you. Just like the renegade bro. As I lift my left hand, I squeeze my left glute. As I lift my right hand, I squeeze my right glute. I can do it from the floor. What a great option. If you're done with these, find your range, your side, be up 10 per side. Woo wee! So good. So setting up the legs a little bit in front of your hips. Inhale. Trying to come off that elbow. So you're using that side body. I'm rolling back on my hip bone to the soft side part of my outer glute. Modifications include staying high on that elbow or staying high on the elbow and using one leg. Once you're done with both sides, you are into, oh, the squat press out, hit that burpees. So good team, keep breathing here. Yes, you can. Take the modification where you need. Go a little slower if you'd like. What can you do, as always, to stay breathing and stay in control? For our squat press out, we're holding on to the sides of that dumbbell and we're pushing into a can. That way it doesn't, or it activates our biceps a little bit more, so we stay a little bit more in control. As I sit back, this actually can allow for a pretty jazzy counterbalance. Squeeze the glutes up, shoulders are out of the ears. If you need to pull back, squat, press out at the top. You can even drop the weight and work it there. Whatever you need when you're done with those. Eight burpees, team. Once you're done with your eight burpees, you're back to your plank taps. Wow. This, I shouldn't say is my favorite round because I love all my children equally. But anyone who knows me, knows that burpees are my favorite. So, sorry kids. Mommy loves this best. Stay with it. In control. Breathing. Again, if you're starting to feel a little bit dizzy, notice if you're holding your breath. If you're starting to feel the wrist sort of light up, feel free to take a forearm plank and instead of shoulder taps, do tap forwards. Tap forwards. So you're still in a shape that works on single arm stability, but with a little less activation through having to stabilize on just that wrist. When we take it to the forearms, we can sort of evenly distribute our body weight a little bit better, like a snowshoe. So good. After your shoulder taps, we are in two, 
Cross body V ups. No, we're not. Side body V ups. Silly Kinsey. Those aren't words that are right. Again, leaning back ever so slightly on this hip so that we can really get deep into that front oblique line. It's that V shape that tucks into the top of our jeans. Sassy, I know. Woo! After these, you've got your squat press out. And of course, at any time, we can take a modification. At any time, we can take a break. These are designed for you to challenge yourself, but we're only challenging ourselves if we can stay in it. So if you do something that puts you out for the rest of the workout, well then you miss the rest of the workout. I'd much rather have you catch your breath and dive back in. Maybe that even means sitting out for a minute or so. Do not underestimate. I mean, now you're doing it. Let me say, a lot of people underestimate how challenging 10 straight minutes of work is. They think something along the lines of, myself included at one point. Well, not running. It's only lifting. But y'all, this is a cardio endurance to the max situation. Once you're done with the press out, here we go into our little bit of burpees. So if you're like, why am I feeling so gassed? For a lot of us, this one might actually get our heart rates higher than a run would. Because we are not just working hard continuously, but unlike a run, we're working every muscle in our body. So it really gets to be that total body endurance, which is just a whole other level of excitement. Once you're done with burpees, shoulder taps, or forearm plank reaches. Yes, team. We have two minutes and 45 seconds. That's like nothing when you think of how much time we've gone through, which is four minutes and 30 seconds now. So good. Just kidding. I'm having a great time. This, like I said, is my favorite for a reason. Woo! Again, stay in control. So if we're flapping all over the place with those shoulder taps, we're not really working our core. I'm so sorry to tell you that. Shoulders have to be on hands, on top of, or elbows. They have to be stacked correctly. Otherwise, we're offloading into our shoulder joints, which not only doesn't work our core, it can put us in a precarious position for our shoulders. And take it from me, shoulder injuries, they suck, man. They are not fun. Not that any injuries are, but come on now. You got this, team. Are we breathing? Already a minute since I talked to you last about time. Time just flies. Huh? Woo! Stay in it. Stay strong. Yes, you can. Right here, we have 90 seconds left. You got this. Stay to the end, or at least until you have to pull back. And then pull back. We love that. Are you crushing the weights? If you're feeling your shoulders, Try to find something that reflects, so whether it's a mirror or in a picture, and notice that as you drop, your shoulders are elevating towards your ears. We want the shoulders way down the back. So we're not training a shrug. We're training those lats to pull down. We're pressing in on the weight, training the biceps, getting a little extra chest activation. Oh yeah, y'all. I'm excited because I feel like we are definitely gonna have time for one more round of burpees for these dolphin pipes. Woo! Okay, 45 seconds. All this work comes to an end right now. Well, not quite. We got those dolphin pipes. Keep it up, team. Chase these last 30 seconds, but in control. Keep breathing. Keep smiling. What a delight that we are healthy enough to be doing this today. And that's not something to be grateful for. I think K1 is 15 seconds. I'm just gonna burp me through the end because let's be real. Did I mention that my favorite? Eight seconds, we meet in a forearm plank. Four, three, two, triangle, set it up. Elbows on your shoulders, pull them energetically towards the toes. Hips up and down. 
as I pike, I'm keeping my core engaged. So I'm not swooping in my low back. I'm constantly thinking of tipping the top of my hips towards the bottom of my rib cage. Bottom of my rib cage towards the top of my hips. Woo wee! I know. If you're like, absolutely not happening, hold your plank. Maybe drop to the knees, hold the plank here. Whatever you need to do. 20 seconds on the clock. Oh yeah. I don't know about you guys, like a little sweat. As you pike up, shoulders are down the back. There is never gonna be a time in one of my classes, I shouldn't say never, but 99% of the time, your shoulders should be out of your ears. Four, three, two, hot diggity dog, child's pose. Final round of our day. Can I get a what, what? We are starting with up, down, 45 degree hops. So starting on our knees, you can always pop a pillow underneath. We're gonna step one foot out. Normally it goes right in front of our body, but we're doing an angle change. So we're gonna step out to the side, 45 degree angle, push through our front heel, launching through that single leg activation, slow lower down. Come through center, other leg, launch through, Soft landing. The goal here is to set that foot down in the back at the last possible moment. So we're simulating essentially like a single leg squat jump. No problem. Ah, modifications. Take out the jump. If it doesn't feel great to be on your knees, go ahead and squat pulse to balance. Squat pulse to balance. We love that. And then there's some other stuff. You know, there's just always some other stuff. We've got our AMRAP, we're going sumo squat. So toes are out. If I was standing on the face of a clock, I'd be at 1 a.m. and 11 a.m. As I sit down, I'm gonna rack my weights, squeezing my glutes, keeping knees in line with toes, squeezing all the way up into a calf raise. Squat down, press through all the way up, exactly, into that calf raise. So we have 10 of those. As always, if you need to pull back, drop the weights, just do that on body weight. Then we have single leg deadlift with a pause. So setting up with our feet straight forward, we'll slide our right leg back, about six inches. We're gonna lower down, hip back, hold four. Three, two, big squeeze, lower down, hold four. Three, two, big squeeze. So that standing foot, we should feel so much tension in our glute and our hamstring, never in our low back. We'll do five on each side or six, excuse me, six on each side. Then we bring it down, 20 Russian twists. Maybe we have a dumbbell, maybe not. Heels down, C curve, rotating all the way, with or without a dumbbell, one, two, three, four, all the way to 20. And then you know the deal. We're back to those old squat jumps. We've got 10 of them. Or let's go eight squat pulses if we're not doing the jump, because it'll be a little slower. And then finally, Saving the best for last, our cardio is gonna be hollow body hold. So lowering the legs, finding that dish shape, C curve in the spine, arms with the up, along the side, or if that's two extra, leg drops. Low back, be pinning the whole time. Wanna do this thing? On our knees. You, my friends, my raiders, we are all champions. We're going in three, on the knees or in that squat pulse in two, one, here we go. Stepping out at an angle, pressing down through all four corners of the feet. We're gonna launch up, land soft. So just like we did on our skaters, the most important part of this is landing with that bent leg. So we go triple extension in the air, knee, ankle, and hip. Soft landing, slow, lower down as we bring it to the ground. Modification. In that squat position, pulse to balance. Eyes up, chest up to balance. Making sure that each time our feet are straight forward. So good. I always love this one. It reminds me of Super Mario. You know the OG version where he jumps out of the tunnel and he's like, Woo That's 100% what I think of. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I really hope it's a real thing. But I've got a great imagination. Five seconds, and we're going sumos in three, two, grab those weights. 
Rack them and stack them. Feet out to one and 11. Squat down. Stand. Balance. Inhale, lower. If you are feeling this in your knees, my very first guess is going to be that your toes are too wide. So normally I tell you eyes up, chest up, and I'm sticking by that. But I do want you to peek down at first. Make sure that knees are in line with toes. Next, on that calf raise, if you're falling out of it, a lot of times we just sort of say, forget it and quit it. I want you to add a pause. Calf raise to pause. Then you drop the weights and do it with a wall to help balance, but nail it. After 10 of those, single leg deadlift to pause. Scoot that right foot back, six inches, hinge back at the left, four. Three, two, big squeeze. Hinging at the hips. Remembering with our deadlift that our torso is that midpoint between parallel with the floor and straight up standing because we really want to keep this in the butt and the hammy and never in the low back. Keep sending the hips back. Six on one side, six on the other. This is a really good one for training safety and our running, for helping prevent shin splints. So we want to make sure that we're setting it up super duper well so we get the most benefit. If your foot's too far back, it's probably going to turn into a lunge. So try to stay on the toe of the back foot and do as little to no weight as possible. Once you're done with six and six, you are into your Russian twist. So maybe set the weights down, maybe not. If you like to have weights in your hands, get nuts, seat curve in the spine, lean back, tapping one direction and then the other. What I'm gonna say to you here is keep your heels down, hinge at the hips, really pull in that low core, and work on leaning back versus balancing the legs. You're gonna get a lot more of that deep transverse activation if we can lean back into it, and if we can stay grounded. Once you hit 20, that's one, two, three, four, your back to those quarter hops. So 10 single leg hops, Mario hops, or squat to pulse to leg lift. So again, modification being ba 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 ba. Woo! And maybe instead of 10 of those, you can hit eight of those. Because they do take just a little bit longer. Whatever variation we're taking, you know I don't want you feeling that in your knee. So if you're in the knee, on either of these, slow it way down. If you're on the squat and you're feeling it in your knee, go ahead and make sure those feet are straight forward, knees are in line with toes. If you're jumping, maybe take the jump out, work on nailing the balance, and then bringing it back down, yeah? So really try to troubleshoot and get it out of there and into the glutes and quads. Find that sumo squat. Here comes that calf raise, making sure that big toe and little toe press into the floor energetically. Try to feel the feet pull together at the top, turning on through those inner thighs. So good. Remember, if you're falling out of it, slow down, find a wall, practice that balance. Notice how much my glutes turn on to support this calf raise. My inner thighs are zipping together. This is a great one. Just to nail a ton of form. After that, my friends, back into our deadlifts. Little pause. Big squeeze over halfway through. Hinging back. So then leave that. So whatever foot is on the floor, imagine that hip being pulled back. And no matter what, Keep thinking of tucking the belly button in towards the spine. So imagine pulling on that tight pair of pants. Walk way back to those wide rows and back flies. Imagine two by four on your back. So the spine is staying super neutral and super in line. So good. If you are feeling it in your low back at all, either drop weight, take it away all together and sort of practice nailing the shape. Or you can take it into a double footed deadlift. I highly recommend, if you're feeling it in your low back, to either film yourself doing it so you can get an idea of your shape, or perform it in front of a reflective surface so you can see if you're arching in the back, if you're in the low spine. 
Be your own coach. And as always, feel free to send me a video of you deadlifting, just deadlifting please, or some other exercise related thing, and I can give you a couple pointers because it is pretty hard when we're first starting out, or even in it. That's why I work with coaches. I need my little finesses all the time. So good. Remember, if you feel it in the low back, reset, pull that tummy in so tight. Two minutes and 30 seconds, team. Stay in control, bring the shoulders with you, and keep it popping. You are almost out of this. Woo! Slow down as you need. Take your breaks if you need. Keep breathing. This single leg, just like when we do a step up on a chair, we're gonna feel it in our quad, but the power in a big way, yes, it's coming from the front of the leg, but almost just as much, it's coming from the butt. So really squeeze the glute. And as you squeeze the glute, think of that leg, the launching leg, getting all the way straight in the air, and then finding that catch, just like a standard jump squat, at the bottom with the bend. So we never land on a straight leg. Woo! Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I'm gonna leave weights out of this. Squat, take that phrase, sumo squat. Eyes up, chest up. You got this. Nailing this calf raise. Woo wee! So good, team. Do what you need to do to do this correctly. Truly, madly, deeply, I mean that. It doesn't matter what you're doing if it's incorrect, right? Because we're not training the right muscles. In fact, it can be detrimental because we're doing the wrong things. Single leg deadlifts. So really, really give yourself permission to slow down and do it right. On this one too, be patient. If you're feeling the stretch in the back of the leg, this is really going to help train and light up. It's a very different move than going fast through these. Like I said, we're training all those stabilizers, 45 seconds in the whole calf area, right? So it's hamstring, it's glute, then all the way down to the stabilizers in the ankle, this is where your team, we make a big difference in our jumps. Stay with it. Keep driving back through the hip or breathing and if you're in that Russian twist, shoulders are back if you're in that hop, landing soft if you're in that sumo, hitting that beautiful <laughs> calf raise. We have team, 10 seconds, and then a hollow body hold, and then we're deep to the O's, the end, and the out of here, my friends, four. Here's three, hollow body, two, and on your back, legs up, lower down, find your dish. Modifications here. Well, intensification, arms go overhead. Modification, hands will slide under your bum. You can either lift the chest, drop it, if this is too much, lift and lower. If you're on your back with your hands under the thumb, lower back, ooh, I'm itchy. Must be down the entire time. So good, team breathe. <laughs> I'm choking on nothing. Ah! I'm choking on excitement. Excited to be in this final round. So ribs pulling in. It's that C-shaped dish curve we've been working on the whole time with every other piece of core. Top or bottom of the ribs, reaching towards the top of those hip bones. Stay with it, team. 10 seconds, keep breathing. Shoulders out of the ears, relax the neck. We're here for five, four, Three, two, bend the knees, hug it out. Oh, let it go. Rock side to side. Close down your eyes. Let's do a little bit of stretching <laughs> before we spend too much time thinking. Oh, what just happened here? Reaching for the feet or the thighs. Let's find a happy baby. Because after all, workouts make us happy. Happy babies. Shoulders and heads are down. Stretching the tailbone to the top of the mat, really feeling a stretch across the thighs and the feet, pressing into the hands, hands pressing into the feet. Maybe connecting the toesies, whatever feels good. Send those arms and legs up, a little circle through the hands and feet. Other direction. If you're taking this live, we did go a little bit over, so if you need to roll out, have a beautiful rest of your day. 
If you can stay in stretch, we'll stretch for about three more minutes here, bringing left, excuse me, right ink on top of left thigh, hugging that thigh in towards the chest. Gently and slowly breathing. Inhaling deep and exhaling, hugging that knee up to the chest just a little bit. Beautiful. Feeling the stretch in the outer left thigh. Gently setting that leg down. If you have any history of low back issue, drop both feet, go for a double-legged twist like this. If you're all clear, slide that right leg over the left. Gently lift the hips, set them over to the right, and let the legs fall to the left. Just a little twist in the IT band. As always, we never force anything here. Big breath in, exhale. Whoo, letting go of that residual heat and energy. Feeling all that vibration that you created in this high intensity day today. Gently unraveling the legs, bringing them back to center, a little shake out. Let's go left ink on top of right thigh. Perfect place to keep them, or if you'd like to go a little deeper, hugging behind that right thigh, shoulders and head are down. Flexing through the feet, opening through that left leg, big breath in, and let it go, whoo, out the mouth. Again, if you have any history of low back, unwind the legs, otherwise if you're set to go, crisscross applesauce with the left, lifting up through the hips, dropping over to the left, and a little little twist here, eyes over to the left, big breath in, filling the body with air, letting it go. Beautiful. One more nice deep breath in, and then as you exhale, gently unraveling, coming into a tabletop here, maybe taking a cat cow or two if that feels good, any other thing that feels nice in the spine. And then starting to come through center, walk the hands forward, flip the toes, downward facing dog, big stretch of the back of the legs. And lifting the heels, eyes to the top of the mat, bringing hands and feet to center, ragdoll, shake it out, big bend. And when you are ready, roll it up ever so slowly, squeezing the glutes, chin is the last thing to stack, and give yourself a round of applause. Because that was C-R-A-Z-Y nuts, y'all. Congratulations. I can't wait till next time. I freaking root. Holy cow.